contemporary version of Spider-Man, which this is, you know, you want to see the stuff that, that Norman is working on, that the Goblin then adapts. It has to be cool. So he has the glider, which is this, you know, personal transport system. Jim Carson designed the Goblin glider along with Neil. It took about four months to build the glider between uh, the, the conception and uh, our final testing on the stage. The original concept that that Sam Raimi wanted to wanted to keep was that it was much like a, a, a snowboard, a flying snowboard, that kind of thing. Kind of hip, kind of cool. We we're trying to just go blue sky and come out with a lot of different concepts. Sam kind of channeled us in more towards the original glider that, that's in the comic book as far as the the feel and what that is, is essentially is a is a rocket tube with a couple of these kind of bat wings that look like they're, they're made out of two by fours so what we attempted to do is still stay true to that so it was still the goblin glider that you see in the comics which is updated and a little cooler and uh, what I originally did is I did just old-fashioned pencil sketch of it for the original design and uh, painted it in the computer. There was quite a complicated rig to design this thing that would, that would fold and open up and fly without anybody getting hurt on it. The bindings we're using are basically a modified snowboard binding. These are like a uh, step-in clicker style system. And um, then they've got a little ball rotator on the bottom of it so they can pivot around and kind of do the whole nine yards. And then these are the really sharp and menacing spears. Pumpkin and then bombs. we've got pumpkin bombs that shoot out the top. These guys will pop out of here and he catches them and then throws them for destruction. We've got uh, machine guns that come out of these two doors right here. And we've got a rocket in the center. This thing is actuated and actually will, uh, on one of the shots, pops out. Flying the Goblin Glider would be challenging. It's moronically simple in a funny way. The, the trick is not to get hurt, not to fall off the thing, and to try to look graceful. So it's, it's all about balance. Up, excellent, excellent. Your feet are locked in. It's a little dangerous because if anything goes wrong, you can't really bail out of it. There's no quick release out of it. So that was a little scary. It's like any sport, you're using different, slightly different muscles. But I'm a pretty fit cat, so I was able to roll with it. You have an unlimited amount of freedom, really. Just so it looks like it works, that's the most important thing. Um, but the, the public, I think, is pretty astute with what might work. We based the design in, in some fundamental principles and so forth, so who knows, maybe it could fly. <laughs> the glider and Goblin's, you know, bag of effects kept changing through the course of the production. A lot of shots we had to match our CG version of the glider against the mechanical version. We had to work very closely with them because every time they made a, a change for the movie, added a new weapon, new prop, added machine guns on or, or something, different, we had to match that in CG. In many shots, we had a CG glider cut back to back with a mechanical version, so we had to make sure that they matched in color and every detail. However, there's a little bit of you know variances that we've got um, between our CG model versus what they built on stage. A lot of it is, you know, sometimes design changes over the course of the movie, or, or physically there's some limitations to what they can physically build on a glider. This shot here illustrates one of those cases. Spider-Man's got his uh, spidey sense going, and he realizes there's some impending danger, and it's coming from the glider. The glider's got these prongs that work out and are intended to impale him. That was sort of a design change that happened from the movie. The blades themselves kept evolving over the course of the movie, and so 
you know, rather than the physical production guys constantly keep building and rebuilding this, it was a lot easier for us to do it digitally. The uh, Green Goblin, he's got this pumpkin bombs that he grabs and they articulate into a whole bunch of different types of weapons. This pumpkin bomb is just an explosion pumpkin bomb. It truly is a bomb bomb. In this case, it's gonna blow up the balcony building that MJ and, and some of our other characters in the movie are standing on. Here is an example of one of the uh, razor bat shots. Again, it's the same pumpkin bomb that you're seeing here that sort of explodes out and articulates into the spinging blades of death. It's got the same design parameters. It's got, you know, the LEDs up on the top. Um, it's got the same sort of top shape of it. But as its shell expands, it'll manifest itself into other types of objects. In almost all cases, whenever there is a physical object that's definitely going to be built, that'll almost always dictate what we wind up doing. The production design had built a, a physical pumpkin bomb. You know, we brought it in-house. We took a look at it. What they had built physically on stage, though, was just the exterior shell. Anything that truly articulated, like, you know, to the razor bats, that was all done digitally. And that design of that articulation was done all you know, here at Imageworks. Uh, we had our art department and some of our TDs. They would try to sort of conceptualize how it should react, what its properties should be. It was one of those cases also for the Razor Bats where we sort of cheated because there's actually no way to physically compress all that if it were truly a real object into that small space.